I'm Yimei Wong with the State of Oregon, and I'll be talking about tsunami risk management using tsunami evacuation buildings. In the Pacific, in the Pacific Northwest, we have a plate tectonic setting with the Cascadia subduction zone capable of creating large uh, Cascadia earthquakes, magnitude 9, um, and with these earthquakes would come uh, large tsunamis that would hit the low-lying coastal communities and uh, threaten um, some of the, the folks there. Um, this is a cross-section of the uh, plates where you have the log zone between the two uh, plates that are converging. Um, in between earthquakes, the coast goes up, whereas the seafloor goes down. During an earthquake, um, there's a release of, of the two plates and the coast goes down, the seafloor goes up, and you develop a tsunami um, at the fault rupture, as well as um, having the tsunami propagate uh, through the ocean and inundate low-lying areas. So the stages of a tsunami are the generation from the earthquake, the propagation, as well as inundation of low-lying coastal areas. At the same time, you would have coastal subsidence along the coast of Oregon uh, up to uh, six feet or so on the south coast. Um, so typically for earthquake preparedness, we talk about uh, duck cover and holding during an earthquake, such as under a uh, strong table, and moving inland and uphill along the coast to avoid tsunami uh, damage. But in some communities, it's actually uh, extensive low-lying areas where another um, form of protection might be prudent, such as tsunami refuges that are engineered to withstand uh, earthquake shaking, as well as tsunami loads. Um, this is a map of Oregon where we have tsunami evacuation maps. We have tsunami um, inundation maps for the entire coastline. So what we would expect is to have, um, after a major earthquake, a tsunami hit the north coast in about 30 minutes. In the, in the south coast, it would be a shorter time frame than that. Um, this is an example on the left of what one of our tsunami inundation maps looks like. This is for Seaside, and on the right is a tsunami uh, evacuation map showing, uh, with arrows showing uh, how to evacuate. Um, there are scientists who have simulated um, an actual tsunami in this community, and it shows that on the right, um, you would have a number of fatalities because the area is so low-lying and there are bridges and uh, a, a large number of people and not everyone would be able to make it out um, within 20 or 30 minutes up to the evacuation zone. So this is uh, an idea to build tsunami evacuation buildings that are robust and able to withstand um, tsunamis right in the tsunami inundation zone. And this is an image of an existing Japanese tsunami evacuation building. In the U.S., we don't have any tsunami evacuation buildings. However, in other places such as Japan, um, they do have tsunami evacuation buildings. And although Seaside is the worst off community in Oregon as far as tsunami hazards, um, there are many other communities up and down the coastline with this hazard, and this is just an example of Newport, especially the South Beach area, um, and Depot Bay. And the yellow indicates the flooding area. Um, in 1960, we had the very largest subduction zone earthquake ever recorded. It was a 9.5. You could see that there was coast seismic subsidence as well as tsunami damage uh, before and after shot. In 1964, the Great Alaska Earthquake, you can see that um, there was uh, damage um, in, in uh, Cannon Beach from, from the earthquake in uh, Alaska at, that created a tsunami which hit our coastline. And this is uh, uh, a graph showing what the wave levels were up and down the coast of Oregon during that um, tsunami from Alaska. In Seaside, there was uh, some damage. This is a car that didn't park there originally, but brought in from the tsunami. And you can see that Seaside is a low-lying area with a lot of rivers um, and a lot of development. 
Um, this is uh, uh, in, in Cannon Beach. There was a um, bridge that was uh, washed away. And you can see the sections of the bridge that translated um, about 500 meters upstream. Um, right in this view is also a, a elementary school. And in the 2004 tsunami in the Indian Ocean, this is an example of what happened to uh, a community in Indonesia before shot and an after shot due to subsidence and tsunami inundation. And another shot from uh, Indonesia. This is a site that I visited in Thailand where uh, the entire community was wiped out, including the bridge. And also in Thailand, uh, I, I visited the site and all of the light frame structures, the wood structures, the, the light frame um, uh, metal structures were washed away from the tsunami waves. So FEMA has come out with a couple of documents um, on building tsunami evacuation buildings uh, that we're very interested in pursuing. Um, as I mentioned, they do have shelters in Japan. Um, a, a team, um, an ad hoc design team, put together a white paper that describes this problem and proposes a solution of building a tsunami evacuation structure in Cannon Beach. And here's an, another example of a tsunami evacuation structure in Japan. Uh, we are talking with the Japanese experts to see how they have successfully done this. Um, in Cannon Beach, uh, there's a proposal to build the new, a new city hall that serves both as a city hall as well as a tsunami evacuation building. This would be um, used as a demonstration project to show other communities up and down the Pacific coastline. Um, City Hall is indicated by the structure next to the, the, the two cars on the south part of this map. This is the tsunami um, evacuation map. A number of studies have already been done there. The tsunami inundation maps um, have just been released and are very high quality um, tsunami uh, inundation maps. These were done post the 2004 Sumatra earthquake and tsunami where a lot was learned from that event. So looking at a schematic design of one of these buildings, it would need to withstand um, strong ground shaking as well as uh, high loads from tsunamis. And you can see the uh, pictures of the seawalls both in front of and in back of the structure to deflect wave energy. And you can see that the first floor um, would allow for passage of, of, of of, of water. Um, and then the second floor and the roof could be used for evacuation. There's a siren on top to indicate that this is um, a tsunami refuge, um, for instance, especially if the tsunami occurred at night and there are large um, multiple structures uh, to help with massive ingress um, into this building. This is a conceptual design of the, um, what the city hall would look like in Cannon Beach and some examples of wave deflection structures for both in front of and in back of the um, structure. And the structure itself would be possibly a post-tension structure where after the earthquake shaking, it's, it um, corrected itself to be vertical and plumb so that people could safely enter the building. Um, this is another part of the, the design, and the foundation would need to have a deep foundation, as well as grade beams to handle scouring, um, as well as potential liquefaction issues. So we would recommend that a tsunami risk approach be taken, where you uh, consider the tsunami hazard, uh, conduct a risk assessment, you engage the community stakeholders, as well as prioritizing the risk as uh, before you mitigate um, the risk. And this could include a combination of moving inland and uphill, as well as having a number of tsunami evacuation buildings strategically placed in your community. Thanks. <laughs>